organizers of this program for inviting me here this evening uh, uh, to this program to be with my brethren and to be one of the speakers of this year's uh, great program. I will thank God Almighty for all of us who are here and for the opportunity to share my little knowledge on the topic that is given to me, which is titled Bearing with One Another, according to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 2. So, thank you all for making it possible for me to be part of this year's program. Yes, uh, when we are in God's family, a lot of good things happen to us. But at the same time, there are other things that can come up in our day-to-day -day relationship. I want to share these uh, studies, this aspect of the lesson with us, so that we can learn how to bond with one another and learn how to bear with one another. Before I go into my lesson, I want to say, uh, coming to this occasion is also a wonderful opportunity for me to meet old faces that I have not seen for a very long time and to also meet and interact with new uh, uh, friends that I have made so far and the ones that we still make. Like you have heard already, my name is today is and I'm here with you today, all the way from Lagos State. So, the topic is bearing with one another, and our text is coming from the book of Ephesians chapter 2, in chapter 4, verse 2, which I want to quickly read before I go further into my lesson. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. And it reads, I will start from this, this one. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called, with unholiness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So, we have been called to bear with one another as Christians. Bearing with one another is not something very easy, but it is something possible. And being together as Christians and as church community is a blessing for us as Christians to interact and to have opportunities for spiritual and social interaction. We are here under the forum of spiritual interaction, but we are also going to socialize. Like I earlier said, I have made some friends within this short period of time, and I'm still going to make uh, additional ones at the end of uh, the program. So, being together as God's people gives us the opportunity of interacting with one another, and it helps and contributes to the building of the body of Christ, which is the church, which he died for. In fact, it helps us to be intentional in bearing with one another. It gives us an opportunity to be intentional. Bearing with one another is not something we just do casually. It is something we have to do intentionally. We have to prepare our minds. We have to know that this is what we want to do and this is what Christ expects of us to do. Ephesians, Colossians, all enjoys us. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13 encourages us to do that very, to that very thing. And this is why we need to continue as members of one another and build one another or encouraging one another to grow spiritually as we bear with one another in this Christian race that we are in. We need to, our brethren, we need one another 
And this is because of many reasons. We have so many reasons why we need one another. Just like Christ connected us to himself at the point of our baptism and repentance, when we submitted to him at that point of our baptism, he brings us to, to himself and also wants us to connect with other, uh, with the rest of our brethren. He did not want us to live in isolation or to, live in, to practice a kind of Christianity that is void of interaction, spiritually and even socially. We have to interact with one another and also see what we can do to build the body of Christ. There are so many reasons why we must be connected with one another. Bearing with one another will help us to mature as Christians in the Christian faith, which is good for us. Because we cannot properly live the Christian life in isolation. Nobody can live the Christian life in isolation. We need to integrate, we need to relate with one another. We need to, uh, to build up one another in order to motivate one another to more excellent services for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The phrase one another is a, re a reciprocal pronoun used in showing that each person in a group of two or more does something for others. You know, when something is reciprocal, that means you, you, there are things I benefit from you and also the ones you benefit from me. So when we see the phrase one another, it is a reciprocal pronoun which Christ is expecting us that anytime we are in a group of more than one or two, we have to share certain things and also benefit with one another. There should be a kind of spiritual symbiosis between us and well, our brethren in the faith. It also shows that in the group or as Christians and members of the lost church, we are involved in a relationship and we owe one another something. I owe you love, you owe me love. And when you give your own love to me and I give to you, or you give to the next person and everybody shares his or her love, time and kindness and everything, you see the body of Christ will begin to be built on. But when I reserve mine and you keep yours as well, then we will be lacking certain part, a certain content that we're supposed to contribute to the building of the body of Christ. As Christians, we are to carry one another we are to carry one another's body, as Galatians chapter 6 tells us. We are to carry one another's body, we are to bear it. We are to share in bearing one another's body. You know, if you read Galatians chapter 6 verse 2, and if you read down to verse 6, you see that all of them, one is, uh, the, the, uh, in our English Bible, the word is used, body, body. But one is body, and the other one is not body. The first one, Galatians 6 verse 2, is body, which, is, which makes it necessary for us to share, to bear with one another's uh, body. We have to put our part, we have to put our hand, place our hands in order to help that person to uh, bear his or her own body. Then you read verse 6, it tells us that let, uh, each one should bear his own body again. But that way there is load, it's no longer body, and load is something that each person can carry. So that is why in the second part, it is not necessary for everybody again to, to be. You have to carry your own body. But the first one, because it, uh, you have to carry your own load, but because the first one demands, it is something you alone cannot carry. You need someone or some of your brethren to share in helping you to carry it. So, we have a lot of things to share with one another. Christ commands us to bear with one another in Galatians. Uh, in Galatians 6, verse 2, we are to bear with one another. Edition 4, verse 2, we are to love one another as John chapter 13, verse 34 tells us. We are to love one another. And Romans 12, verse 10 tells us also to be devoted to one another. We are to be devoted to one another. So it is still a requirement. We have this requirement, expectation. We have to obey what Jesus Christ our Lord tells us to do. So, we are to, uh, to be devoted to one another. We are also to honor one another and to live in harmony with one another and then build up one another in love. These are part of the things that are reciprocal. 
you are to tell, you are to gift me with that which uh, which you have, and I also gift you with that which comes from me. So by do so doing, we begin to uh, build one another up. That is what God is expecting us to do. So as we can all read from this Bible, we all we all owe one another a great lot in Christ Jesus. As Christians, we owe one another a great lot. There are a lot of things we owe one another. The ones I mentioned are not the all. They are not all. They are part of the things that we owe one another. Hence, the need for us to build one another up as commanded and demanded as well as expected by our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Brethren, we need to love one another and bear with one another in love as much as it is possible with us. This is the command of Christ in Romans chapter 12, verse 18. We are to bear with one another. It says in Romans chapter 12, verse 18, the Bible clearly says that as much as it is possible with us, as much as it is possible with us. That means if we must make effort to make it possible. We must make effort to make it possible so that we can uh, bear with one another. Romans chapter 12, verse 18 uh, tells us that it says, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peacefully with all men. So we must make effort to live in peace with one another. So, to bear, the word bear is from the Greek word anekoma. It is from the Greek word anekoma, which is translated to mean to endure, to endure, to put up with, to suffer as well. These are some of the words that can be interchanged for bearing. So you can see, to bear, have a lot of effort, demands a lot of effort. We need to do certain things, we need to take some certain steps in order to fulfill that law of our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 17, 17, Mark 9, 19, Luke 9, 41, Acts 18, 14, and 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 12, all uh, point us to doing that. Bearing with one another is part of living a life worthy of our calling. For us to live life worthy of our Christian calling, we must learn to bear with one another. You cannot live a worthy Christian life without bearing with one another. If you cannot put up with someone, then where is your Christianity? Where is your love for Christ? We have to build up one another, bear with one another in love, not with grudgingly, uh, not with grudges, and not grudgingly. We have to do that because we want to please our master, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is part of living a life worthy of our body, as Ephesians 4 verse 1 tells us. What it means fitting, becoming, appropriate. So for us to live the life worthy of our body, that body which is, that is for us to live a life that is fitting, that is befitting, that is appropriate with and that is in line with the will of God, then we must bear with one another. It is not, it's just like it is not okay or fitting or appropriate for an 80 year old man to dress like a 20 year old boy. It is not appropriate for that person. If you see an 80 years old man dressing like a young man of 20 years, then something is wrong. That is how it is. If we fail to bear with one another as Christians, then something is wrong with our faith. Something is wrong with our Christian life. So, and it means that the life which we are living will not, will not be appropriate with the will of God. So, brethren, bearing with one another requires humility. It requires gentleness. It requires patience because people will surely great situations for you that will make bearing with them difficult. Even as Christians, sometimes we make efforts to put up with one another. We make efforts to bear with one another. 
If not because of Christ, because of his instruction, honestly speaking, sometimes we will not want to relate with some of our brethren, even in the church. But because the love of Christ rules supreme in our hearts, so we have to condescend. We have to show humility. We have to be patient with people, just like God is bearing with us on daily basis. On daily basis, we continue to sin against God. God has not killed us yet. He's giving this patiently waiting for us to see to seize the opportunity of repentance so that we can live and serve Him better. So we need a bearing with one another, need humility, gentleness, and patience. And in bearing with one another, humility will help us to remember that we too are not perfect in some ways. If you are thinking you are perfect, that the other person you are putting up with is the one that is always at fault. Remember, you too are not perfect. And then it also means that somehow, somewhere, you are also offending somebody. So we that is why it becomes necessary for us to bear with one another. We must make allowance for forgiveness. And we must show humility in our relationship with one another. So that we will continue to win people more to Christ's side. Bearing with one another connotes the idea of putting up something annoying and or enduring difficulties because of love for the sake of Christ as much as it is possible with us. It connotes that idea of enduring, enduring difficulties or things annoying. So we need to uh, note that we need to bear with one another. Thank you. I was even afraid whether I have five minutes more to do. <laughs> Thank you. I don't worry, I'll finish before the time you have given to me. Now. All right. So, this we have to do in love, just as God in Christ, in His love, forgives us. First John, uh, John 13 34, 1 Timothy 1 16, and 2 Peter 3 16. Now, let us look at this bearing with one another, which is the, uh, the main issue which we are looking at and this, uh, discussing. Bearing with one another promotes healthy Christian relationship. Even in the home, in our homes, sometimes we put up with our wives. We bear with their weaknesses. Sometimes some of the things they want us to do, we do them not because we want to do some of them, but because we love them and we want to please them. So we have to just do some of those things. This is how it should be, even with our relationship with one another. If we want to promote healthy relationship as Christians, we must learn to care with one another because it helps in promoting healthy and building healthy Christian relationship among us. But it requires hard work and a lot of grace to be sustained. We, it is not something that just happens automatically. It is not automated. It requires grace from God. It requires our intentionality and our efforts to want to bear. Otherwise, we will not want to bear with one another. And we will not be able to fulfill what the law tells us, the law of Christ. And when we look at the way Jesus handled and treated issues in his days, we will learn a lot and learn how to be able to bear with one another and to bear up with people in our own days. Just like Jesus Christ struggled in his own way to bear up with the scribes and the Pharisees on a regular basis. On we think that it was just so easy for Jesus Christ to continue to condone those scribes and Pharisees, their attacks. The accusations, the allegations, from time to time, they were always looking for opportunity uh, to accuse him, but they couldn't find anyone. It is, it was, it is not very easy, nor palatable, with Jesus to continue to cope on regular, uh, to cope with the regular attacks of the Pharisees, but he was able to tolerate them. He was able to bear their accusations. He was able to stay focused on his ministry 
He lost his purpose of coming to this world. So he, he was not distracted. His attention was not divided. He knew what he was doing. And he never allowed anything to distract him from his purpose. Likewise, today as Christians, we must strive and keep seeking for the greater good of the brotherhood and the church by bearing with one another and building healthy Christian relationship. Sometimes, uh, some time ago, I attended a burial somewhere in the east. And a minister uh, uh, on arrival sat on a canopy. The entire congregation of that canopy stood up and left that canopy and relocated to another canopy. We were all shocked. It was just the minister and his wife left sitting on that particular canopy. In that position, we had we had a lot of challenges, but at a point we got to know that the reason the people there reciprocated that act, or uh, yes, let me use that word, to him, they later told us that in that community, when brethren, when other congregations have some programs, or yes, they have programs and they invite the members of this congregation, he will not come. So when he at, uh, arrived in that particular location, they saw an opportunity to pay him his own coin. Brother, it was not okay for us because we, we, we are not part of their problem. We only went there to bury our brother who died, but not to make problem. We were able to uh, 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 broker peace between them at the end. So, brethren, we must not fail in making allowances for offenses for one another's fault. Just like tell us, leave allowances for adjustments where, wherever they are showing clothes. We need to give allowances ahead in case of offenses because surely people will hurt us and offend us. So we need to extend grace and patience to those who are different and difficult to deal with. When tellers are showing clothes, they always make allowance in case maybe the clothes becomes tight or something or oversized. So you can reduce it or you can expand it. In life and in our Christian relationships, we must make allowances like that. We must make allowances in ahead, just like tell us we can be saved ahead of time and make that space so that if anyhow or if by chance it goes wrong, either way, whether it becomes too tight or uh, too loose, you can make adjustment. We should prepare our minds as Christians. We must prepare our minds to relate with one another and see how we can love one another and build the body of Christ. We should continue to extend hands of fellowship one from time to time to one another so that we will become a strong brotherhood of believers. This is what God expects us of. Love is our badge of Christian unity. Love is what the world will see in us and know that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. If we cannot love, we cannot be. And if we cannot be, we cannot love. Because we will not be able to live our lives worthy of the calling of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, some Christians bear grudges and keep records of offenses for years. Despite Christ's warning in Colossians 3, verse 13, to forgive whatever grievances. To forgive whatever grievances. But some people will keep records of offenses, they will keep it in their diaries. Continue to polish it, clean it, dust it, so that they will keep that offense fresh in their memory. So that anytime they have opportunity to take their pound of flesh from you, they will want to bend their hand. Brethren, this is not Christian like. It is on Christians for us to do that. Bible tells us to forgive whatever grievances we have with one another. We must not be keeping grudges because it is out of character for a Christian to hold grudges for long. To build healthy Christian relationship, we must learn to forgive one another as Christ forgives us. Although to forgive may be difficult at times, but it is possible to forgive if we are willing. That is why I said we must be intentional. We must be intentional in doing our in our relationship with one another. So we must learn to forgive if we are to wait. To forgive, to feel like forgiving, then we will not be able 
to forgive people when they offend us. We must know that forgiving may not be dependent on our feelings. It is something imperative. It is an imperative. Jesus Christ commands us to forgive one another, to bear with one another. So we cannot just say, I don't feel like forgiving him. I'm still feeling the pain. I don't want to forgive. No. We must learn to forgive, brethren. We must not learn to forgive. But let us not forget that all people are the way they are because of the experiences and difficulties of their life. People are like that. All people are the way they are because of the different experiences and the situations of their lives, which makes them to act or behave the same way they behave. So as Christians today, we have been enjoying to bear with one another. We have been enjoying to do that in love, with humility, with patience, to make allowances for people who will even offend us ahead. I don't know you, you don't know me, but you should prepare your mind that we are not perfect. And because we are not perfect, at times, at certain points of our uh, recent interaction and relationship, there is possibility of us offending one another. But when it happens, we should make, uh, we should not let the sun go down. We should find a way to make peace with one another. Therefore, my brothers, today, our Lord Jesus Christ is enjoining us to love, to forgive, and to bear with one another. Let us begin to be intentional in our relationship with one another. Let us begin. In case we are not intentional in doing that, it is time for us to begin to become intentional. We must decide to bear. We must decide to forgive. We must decide to love. We must decide to walk worthy of our calling in, uh, in Christ. So, let us begin to be intentional in our relationship with one another. Let us begin to release all those bias of bitterness and grudges of our lives because they will not help us. And let us begin to bear with one another and forgiving them as we see the day approaching. What will it profit you and I if we end up in hell and uh, at the end of life? We die carrying or carrying pains in our heart, bearing bitterness, bias of bitterness and unforgiveness. And we take them, transport them with our soul to heaven to stand before God and be rejected because we refuse to forgive. It will not pay us, it will not help us in any way. Let us begin to bear with one another, let us begin to know one another. So, as I conclude today, bearing with one another is difficult, but it is possible. Nobody is saying that you should condone the sin of one another. I'm not saying that we should condone sin because we want to bear with one another. No, that is not my point. But you should bear, you should learn to prepare your mind to bear with the uh, some irregular activities that can come as a result of relation, relating with one another. So you should try to learn to bear with one another as it is possible with you. This does not rule out the possibility that it is possible. It can be possible and it is impossible because if it is not possible, Christ will not ask us to do that. So we should make room for forgiveness. We should learn to give space for forgiveness. We should give room uh, for all those situations that can hurt us so that it will not settle in our heart. This does not rule out the possibility nor gives us the room to claim impossibility in resolving situations, no matter how difficult it might be. In life, problem goes along with their solutions. So if we really look well, we see the solution of problems along with the problem as they go very fast soon. So, the, as it is possible with you, because the idea of Christian working hard to bear, to tolerate, to endure in order to build up one another for the optimal good of one another for Christ's sake. The, as it is possible with you does not give you room to say the, even the Bible says, as it is possible. So, it is not possible. If you say that, then you are not looking at the other part of it in Colossians 3.13. So it is possible. That is why it is possible. And that is why God is telling us that as it is possible, we should do that 
It is not optional, it is imperative, it is a command. We must learn to bear with one another and forgive one another their fault. It is possible. Let us learn to help people to carry out and uh, to carry their bodies of life. Some people are the way they are because of the problems they are facing in their life, and we need to help people in life. Let us learn to live in harmony with one another. And let us not forget that all people are the way they are because of the experiences and the difficulties of their life. That is why all people are the way they are, and the way we are. Let the love of Christ dwell richly in our hearts. Let the love of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and help us to bear with one another patiently, with love and with humility. And let us walk and strive to bear one another's faults. May God Almighty bless us and help us so that we continue to live the Christian life so that at the end of life we will receive the welcome uh, and we will hear the welcome voice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May God bless us and help us in Jesus' name. Thank you very much for listening.